I think we're on. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Always got to check, double check before we do anything. Because if we don't double check, then we have to triple check afterwards. We are on. We are on. We are on. We are yeah, on. we are on. Sweet. First stream ever. <laughs> Uh, Ooh, so, hello. welcome everyone, welcome anyone who decides to join and watch the stream later. I'm Helzo, I'm discussing, and I have with me a beautiful fluff that is on screen. Also, the 40k Empress is with me, she's a quite well-known YouTuber around these parts. She hosts a lot of shows, she has a lot of content, she's now, I think, exclusively, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, going with the Warhammer 40k universe, and she's been very active on it. Say hello. Hello to everyone, guys. Yes, I'm the 40k Empress uh, Gary. This is one of my fluffy tanks. This is Goldie, <laughs> my Pomeranian. He's just going to join us because he's restless and he wants uh, snuggles. But yeah, guys, uh, I have been around YouTube for a lot of years, and we have been friends with you for a lot of years. And finally, we have joined forces on your channel and on my channel, actually. Of course, uh, that's going to be later. So yeah, uh, we have to talk about stuff, because what we also have in common is uh, that we are totally against some current political stupidity in the world of absolutely everything. So yeah. <laughs> we are and one of the things that uh, i wanted like the main topic actually that i wanted to talk with you about today is why modern entertainment sucks like i'm going to just start a short intro and then i i would like to hear your thoughts on the matter the reason for the topic of today's conversation is because we've had quite a few years of a downfall uh with all kind all with every kind of entertainment and i mean with gaming with tv shows with movies uh even with some youtube channels actually that have gone over to uh, a certain site that is not very how should i put it um objective and the re i wanted to ask for your opinion on the matter why do you think this happened what is the main cause i mean there are several causes that can be pointed but what is the main cause that companies that used to provide us with quality entertainment uh have decided to shift into the modern narrative and just start producing things for not for their audience if we can say that okay well actually i have seen a video recently which you know, just uh, literally a few days ago, uh, it's a video by the Upper Echelon. I'm not sure if you're familiar mm -hmm. with his channel. I know, I know. Okay, so he basically explained that DEI politics, integration into everything is because companies were uh, convinced that that is going to bring them a lot of profit. Mm -hmm. But as it turns out, it's quite the opposite. So, <laughs> well, that's really the incentive and now they're seeing that actually this is ruining their business and, and does not help in the slightest. So hopefully things will start to get turned around. But the main reason for all of this is really because they were convinced that this is going to help them out. So yeah. Just wanted to interrupt you. You have your dogs, I have my cats. <laughs> yeah. Everyone get the fluffy thing, kiss it, love it, <laughs> and take care of it. They'll be thankful for it. I will use this uh, short break just to bring it to attention that my Patreon currently, uh, whoever subscribes to it for whatever tier, uh, can get to know that 100% of everything that I personally make from there goes to homeless animal shelters and to needing animals. I just wanted to put that in there. Uh, if you want to help animals, I will be posting a lot of links to donations, to charity events, and to charity organizations, both locally and internationally. Uh, that's absolutely amazing. just want to congratulate you on that. Thank it's you. absolutely amazing. It's much needed, especially in our country, where half of the people are like completely, you know, well, not very good people. So yeah, animals yeah. need help. Yes, exactly. And with the, um, with the number of uh, homeless animals that we have, uh, they do need our help, especially in the winter. 
But uh, back on the topic to see, you mentioned the upper echelon and the report that you're talking about, I've, I've read the report like from, I think it, it was from 2016, the reports the, that introducing uh, active diversity and uh, those types of politics that we now know of so well, will actually bring uh, a new um, niche of people to be fans because you're having especially with the classic shows you have fans especially let's say shows like star wars and star trek uh those older franchises uh they have the kids from the 80s that are now grown people and they're still fans but if you want to bring the next generation the report basically says that you need to change things around and that was the premise and that's what the companies bought now, eight years yes. later, <laughs> things have not turned out great. And things have not turned out great because what what it came to light to be is that people actually don't like new things in their old shows and in their classic narratives. They don't want to see changes to their favorite characters or to their favorite storylines. Story mm, and especially when it is uh, forced and it's just in your in your nose uh, with the whole concept of the girl balls and the masculinity of uh, men and the whole everything is to be blamed on a certain group or race or gender and to be just pushed in into every narrative every show every game now uh one of the things that uh actually came out a few days ago as uh, news is that microsoft on July 1st, they basically fired their DEI department. So right after Pride Month, <laughs> they decided to fire their DEI department. And part of the reason that I think that this happened is that uh, it's just... It, it just came into light that eight years is a uh, long enough time to see when a project has failed and the money that ev every bit of money that has been pumped into those types of shows and games i think the the well is finally dry and they don't have any more money to give especially with the losses that they have sustained over the years amazing news that's amazing actually yeah. i think i heard that but it was like well, a while ago, as you said, so July 1st, and I totally forgot about it by this point, but that's amazing. I hope they fire, I mean, each company fires their uh, diversity, um, what is that, like companies like Sweet Baby, like fire all of them. And yeah, it's, it's basically all companies that just hire uh, companies that's like Sweet Baby Inc. that very, very openly said what to do to a company if they don't accept your politics and your viewpoints and how you should uh, threaten the marketing department. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love that clip, by the way, of uh, that uh, Sweet Baby Inc. Com uh, conference. Um, but something that I want to point out, because I think we have to be fair when we talk about inclusion and diversity, and that is when it comes, when it comes naturally, when it comes uh, in the form of a good, well-thought uh, action, in into a product then i think everyone uh, or at least the majority is pretty much up for it and i have some evidence to support that which goes right back to 2012 with mass effect uh if you remember the mass effect franchise that's basically for me ground zero of diversity because that's one of the most major games at that time that uh, you could uh, romanticize people from your own gender uh, that you could be any like you could be both genders and romanticize people from your own gender in the trick games and the romance is thick and everything was very well thought out actually uh, because first of all it's the future uh, and things are a lot more different than they are currently you have aliens you have everything even the one of the primary uh, love interests in the game that almost everyone chooses is an alien who is like they appear female they are female like in every essence of the word and <laughs> your eyes they're female but it, it, their race is neither uh they just don't procreate in the same way that humans do even though they're humanoid and that's really well thought out and it's very natural 
to have it. And not, not a lot of people have any issues with that. And a lot of people still play the games and are still pretty much okay with that thing. But that's what happens when that thing, like that, that aspect was um, put in naturally. It wasn't the driving force of the games. It wasn't the, the main focal point. Uh, it was one of the things that was integrated and that's just how the world was. There wasn't any un 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 um, unneeded attention. There wasn't any just focus for three hours just on that. You had it. It was there and you could choose to either uh, live like that and let's say pursue a same-sex romance or alien romance or whatever or you could just do whatever you want there is there is even a uh, space racist <laughs> uh, uh, character there that you can romanticize so you have both sides of the argument on, on that thing uh, but uh, i have another question for you do you think do, do, do you think that some aspects of the DEI culture are good. I mean, do they have any good standing place in modern entertainment? And they can can they be integrated better than they're integrated now? Okay. Well, uh, first of all, if my uh, doggy barks, I'm gonna mute myself, <laughs> <laughs> like now. <laughs> Second. Uh, second, well, you mentioned Mass Effect, but there's many, many other examples. Yes. Before 2016, before a lot of those uh, things actually happened. So basically in the movies and the games, we had natural diversity for years. Exactly. Even yes. going back 20 years, even going back 30 years. I actually watched one of the oldest movies of Leslie Nielsen, like, you know, Naked Weapon and others. Mm -hmm. There's diversity there and you don't even think about it. It's just there. It's just uh, working. Exactly. Uh, it, it is natural. I like the word is natural. So there's nothing forced. It's the opposite of now. You can see that in Zena Warrior Princess, the TV show. It's myth, it's legend, but you know, it's fantasy for the most part. And you can see a lot of actually black characters integrated there. And they could stick out like a sore thumb, but the way that their characters are written in the story is just extremely just seamless, you know, seamless. It's not like, oh my gosh, I'm watching the latest Gladiator trailer, I see you know, um, how, how, was, how was his name? Totally forgot right now. Uh, uh, Denzel Pascal. Washington. Ah, Denzel Washington. All right. Denzel Washington. My apologies, guys. Uh, there's so many uh, characters and names right now in my head. <laughs> we just finished another talk. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Denzel Washington. I'm seeing him being some kind of a, you know, like gladiator, handler, so to speak. In those times, I see that he's playing a... A particular historical figure, as far as we understood, um, me and one of my friends started looking into that, and it turns out that he's supposed to be playing some guy that actually did exist. Uh, mm -hmm. He uh, he even has some busts made out of him. He looks like a Caucasian guy. Maybe he was with a bit of a darker complexion because he was like Arabic. Um, yeah, not not exactly, but yes, uh, around uh, these parts. But he was not black, so, you know, in, in this case, it's like, uh, okay, this time, in this case, this character does take out like a sword thumb because it really feels very out of place to see, uh, you know, a black person in this high position of power. And later, if he is playing this exact uh, historical figure, he is actually supposed to become an emperor of Rome, which was extremely weird how that happened, but that happened in history. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think that there's anything good in today's uh, politics when it comes to how they do things now with all the DEI rules and check boxes that they have to do, because everything about that is forced by nature. So it's not like I can excuse any of it, because by nature it's just inherently, it is coming from a very bad place, whereas before, Everything that was diversity was natural, it was seamless, nobody talked about it in any kind of a way, negative or positive, because everyone just accepted what what it was. The same way that you accept white characters, the same way that you accepted Asian characters, you know? We, uh, with you, both of us uh, grew up with movies 
like um, Men in Black uh, movies with Jackie Chan. Uh, lots of other movies like what Blade, <laughs> you know, Spawn. Yeah. There's so many of them, and nobody questioned anything. And even us, because we are from Bulgaria, uh, for us, you know, people of color are, are not something that we actually see every day, at least not black people. But we still <laughs> yeah. absolutely had zero, absolutely zero uh, racism towards any of these black uh, actors or characters or whatever. Just the thought did not cross the mind. We also grew up with artists that are black or Asian as well. Super famous people, legends that we also uh, admired uh, when growing up. So everything was normal. But after that, just people decided to have some... A particular narrative that they wanted to push because money and now see where we are so basically yeah this covers games this covers movies everything you're absolutely right by the way uh i mentioned mass effect because i just wanted to be a bit more modern but uh when you uh, mentioned xena warrior princess i immediately thought of star trek the next generation and even the original series uh star trek generation by every definition of today's wokeness if you have to uh assign certain aspects let's say the domination of women let's say in a certain aspect it does have some very active pseudo woke elements you have an episode in star trek the next generation when they're on a planet where women are the big and strong and the men are actually the small ones and like they hired some pretty large like pretty muscular women for the roles the whole the whole scene was amazing but this was in the late 80s like this was before i was born and my mind immediately jumps to uh something else uh more modern that is the best star trek without being star trek i don't know if you have watched the orville by seth MacFarlane, the creator of family yeah, the orville it's like it was like something funny basically at the beginning at least i watched a few first episodes i think it was like a parody of star trek uh, but then it became serious as far as i know it it's like that that's what i thought when i first uh heard of the show but when i watched the show yeah it does it is a bit more of a funny version like seth mcfarland definitely has his family guy influence on there uh but the, the whole show the the absolute whole show the three seasons that are up they're amazing like they're absolutely amazing engaging they have some very very heavy elements there and they have the best depiction of a uh like of those uh i those things that woke people pretend that they want to include without forcibly including them the the show is just it it, it inputs the, so, uh, those elements so smart that you never feel like it's forced you never feel like it's out of the blue it's just the way it is and it it the, the the show is absolutely amazing it it is the best star trek without being star trek and it's very modern but it does it, it just shows that when you have um smart people and capable of people of even though even having to implement such such things into a show even if they have to implement it, they will implement them smartly so uh, i i don't think personally that moving forward we'll be able to just rely on the old stuff anymore i mean i would agree that some things in filmmaking will have to evolve because you we like we we can't rely only on what was shown in the past because first of all uh while it's good to watch a 80s style action flick like the expendables uh it's very fun to watch to turn your brain off and just watch just watch some fun and explosions or to have uh, john wick which is actually like deeper than uh some of those movies you you need to focus on the, the way that the mindset of the people is changing and i'm uh, i'm all, i'm all up for uh those changes like to, to to change with the 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 people that actually watch but this this is where the problem the, the main problem comes they're changing things for a group of people that are not interested in watching those things in the first place. Because if you see the viewer rate of some of the new shows, like The Acolyte, for instance, which is 
absolutely destroyed by viewer ratings. If you see the new Doctor Who uh, with Nchuti Gatwa, uh, who is the first Black Doctor, or the second if you count that like a episode in a previous season, uh, you see that all those changes that were claimed to be made for the modern audience just drove the core audience away but they did not bring any modern audience because the modern audience doesn't exist actually the modern audience is not an audience they're just people in the majority of cases that just whine about it on the internet they whine about that there's not much diversion there's not much inclusivity and etc etc but when 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 the time comes to play the game or buy the game or go to the cinema they're not there because they're never they're not interested in the product they're interested in just uh dunking on the the product itself like as it existed i i watched um someone like trying to raise a wave like to, to start a wave i think against the terminator movies that was a while ago because it was too misogynistic because why should john connor this was before genesis this was before the the last movie with the new john connor the female john connor uh, that i call her i forgot her name um and they were starting trying to start a wave of uh like to, to cancel terminator movies i guess because it was just a, why should the man be the leader when the woman is the leader and some people that's it, stupid. It, that's stupid. yeah that's yeah so stupid yeah, uh, like, and they they try to depict Sarah Connor as, oh, she was just the mother, she was just the carrier, she didn't have, she's just the broodmare, she was just there to be, uh, to give no birth. Sense. That's and not I'm, true. She's actually the action, the human action action hero of the movie because we don't have another one, you know? She's we she's one of the, the best female action heroines in existence. She's the, like, if, if there is a definition of a true girl boss, she and Ripley from Aliens, they're the the they're the 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 top. They're everything that uh they are is amazing because they don't rely on brute strength, they rely on wits and on like cunningness. Uh if you remember the scene when um Sarah Connor just uh, snipes uh miles dyson the 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 professor that was going to create skynet that she was trying to kill him uh, if you remember the scene when the terminator r rips his hand yeah, just to mm -hmm. yeah like if if you watch her facial expressions during the whole scene right up until her son comes with the terminator like the performance the 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 expression that uh, uh she has in that scene just to be cunning in the in the night just to, to do it swiftly and unexpectedly this is the this is the strength of a strong female character a true strong female character like because we could like we can talk about like differences in uh like physique or in height or in whatever and who's better and who's better. but like you can have amazing people and they should not be defined just by one standard. Like, yeah, you can but have they the both. You know, Ripley and you know Sarah Connor both share uh, the fact that they look physically enough opposing. As yes, women. Like, yes. For sure. Uh, you know, Sarah Connor was uh, very muscular and very lean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I don't remember uh, how Sigourney Weaver was exactly because I probably have not seen this movie since I was like what seven. I, I don't remember. Really she pro she kind of has time. the same body type, like a bit, li a bit. She has a bit longer body, but uh, she she she's also very very in shape. Great, amazing. But yeah, you know, uh, the differences between how female characters are written now and, the, you know, and before was that before they they had a lot of substance and they didn't always like uh, told their story in a huge detail or anything like that. But the way that everything was shown, you know, show, don't tell compared to now, I mean, you get the idea perfectly of who these women are and what they're capable of in a very 
an organic way throughout the whole story and you get the perfect idea of what kind of human beings and women they really are, what they are capable of in certain situations, which is extremely amazing 3D way to tell a story. And now it's just a Mary Sue type of a character who learns everything because she just can and, and that is it. There's no really a lot of substance to that at all. It's just done, you know. So that is where people lose their interest and their connection to those characters because they're really very, very surface level. And for yeah. example, when we're talking about, you know, Zena, because Zena at least is a character that has been written uh, a long time ago, like 1995 through 2001, uh, still times where people have not seen anything like that, quite like uh, Zena before. You have a whole TV show to tell her story. And it's amazing how she has this arc of uh, being very evil at the beginning. Uh, but you find this out throughout the whole series. You know, you find you find out why she is the way that she was. Uh, she just had this very unfortunate uh, happening, basically, to her, where her village was attacked, her younger brother was killed. She got, uh, she was like a regular girl, basically, but nobody else uh, was there to stand to stand up and fight and she decided to do that she decided to pick up the sword learn how to do that that took like years and she decided to protect other villages but then uh, her mind got twisted she lost herself somewhere around there uh, and that's the issue she became the warlord that she fears then she learned the all the fighting techniques that look uh, that took years and years to learn from Ares the god of war from uh, like other really uh, martial arts uh, specialists, like the Empress of China, and one other girl that was, was, was um, that was actually like a slave girl that had the thoughts, you know, the pressure points technique. So there's layers upon layers of learning, and then at the end of things, at the end of her evil career, she's meeting Hercules, and uh, she's actually seeing the error of her ways through her army and how the army wants to do bad things that she doesn't actually want to do. And then Hercules opens her eyes and then she she becomes the warrior princess, the good warrior princess that we know and love. And she starts this arc of redemption, uh, which is like so deep throughout the whole series. So it is mind-blowing how much, uh, you know, wisdom there is in the whole story. And compared to today, today's characters are like, you know, this uh, meme on Facebook that you see with the dragons, like <laughs> uh, the dragons, yeah. you know, one dragon is this and one dragon is uh, this. And then, and then the the end, uh, yeah, the last dragon is like <laughs> a completely brain dead idiot. Yeah, so, that's more than yeah. entertainment. <laughs> that is how it is. That is how it is now. Yeah. Yeah. And you actually raise a pretty good point with the storytelling because uh, I, I actually thing that there is a very strong connection between uh how people are now um attention deprived they, they don't have the the attention span that they used to have before uh you have social media and tiktok and shorts and short clips and you just uh go around and you don't want to watch longer things and that i think transfers to how uh, TV series are made now with six or seven or eight episodes uh, per season. Uh, you know that what my favorite TV show is called Supernatural. Supernatural was made in 2005 up until 2020, 15 episodes. This is 15, se uh, 15 seasons, sorry. This is 15 seasons of 22 to 26 episodes each season. The and format, each, yes. And each episode is 50 minutes long. So this is like 327 episodes, I think. And like this format, like the, the way the story progresses and the, the way that you can immerse yourself in everything that has been going on in the world, in the, the, the two brothers, the main character, the side characters. This this is the same trope that has been missing from modern uh, shows, especially with the, the latest shows, like when you have six or seven or eight episodes, but you want to tell a story that is uh, like, it. it's probably written very rich and you had to cut so many things. And that's actually one of the things that, uh, one of the many things that uh, angered me with The Witcher because The Witcher 
has some like just the first book of the wager has so many stories that you can tell in such great details i mean you can tell the first book in three seasons not in one but everyone is in a hurry nowadays to just bring you more content to bring you more stuff to bring you more story and to just do it quicker and that is one of the many many problems that we have in the modern net and when you couple it with uh the the, the insert politics when you couple it with uh, the rewrites when you couple it with just cutting 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 and okay we're gonna leave this we're gonna change that we're gonna do this and you're left with a mangled corpse of a product that nobody <laughs> wants to touch yeah oh, yeah <laughs> oh wait a minute a uh, bulgarian came out so uh <laughs> along those lines that's something like yeah something what i wanted to say so yeah but you know you have uh shows like uh house of the dragon which is pretty slow burn and everybody is watching it i mean it's not like game of thrones because it's just not the whole universe just a part the story of the universe but it's still very solid and there's no well almost no crap there from the current things and i mean except in the last episode something happened that i don't want to spoil but i'm pretty sure that's not in the books uh, i and saw it's... i saw it yeah the the scene i saw the scene uh, i haven't yeah. seen it because i want to like i want the whole season i want to binge the whole season uh and sorry to uh intersect you here but uh like house of the dragon is uh like I, i'm not saying that shorter seasons or shorter shows are inherently wrong but you have to have a smaller story to tell in order to tell it right. You can't have a grand story in a short time. Just, yeah, I mean, just like the opposite. The show, really. Just, just like the opposite. I'm gonna give you an example of the opposite. The Hobbit trilogy. Uh, this is a 300-page book, which has been so stretched to make three long movies that it, you lose any sense of the story. And this is the opposite effect of what we were talking about. So you have to have the, you always have to have the balance and the balance is currently very lost. Yeah, well, uh, the differences between the supernatural, uh, Xena and let's say House of the Dragon is that, you know, supernatural and Xena can build from the ground up. Uh, it can create uh, the story as they go. It can make the story as long as they want. Uh, but with the House of the Dragon, you already have a story that you're supposed to be telling. So you have to just pick the format that's best for that length and that density of the story. So it's just two different things, really. Yeah, in this case, it is. Uh, that's what I, uh, I'm i saying. It's not necessarily bad to have shorter shows, but the majority is, uh, first of all, it's making you, like, especially when you know the product, like when you know the source material. And I talked briefly about this in my Lord of the Rings video, that when you have, um, like, when, you, when you're when you immersed in the storyline, you want, you want as much of it that you've read transferred to the screen and to see as many things. And I, that's why I hold Lord of the Rings, the trilogy, in such regard, because they did the amazing job of cutting just the 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 right things out from the movies from the books that's uh th that's how you should do it you do have a story and if you go with the story like with every letter of the book then you have not three but eight movies <laughs> and it still wouldn't be enough to tell the whole story uh so yeah it's not bad necessarily bad and not always bad to have a shorter uh story uh series and season but you have to have the appropriate story and the length of story that you can compress or in this case or or in some cases even a bit expand just to place it very well it, it has to fit yeah, of course, but he has to fit, yeah. So, uh, well, for me, I don't have a lot of time in my day. So <laughs> for me, House of the Dragon once a week, a one hour is enough uh, of uh, effort for me to sit down and watch. <laughs> so, you know, well, if you know we have Xena right now, of course, I'm going to watch Xena if it's like 40 <laughs> minutes and it's still once a week, but you have more episodes. That's still going to be perfectly fine with me. They can keep the budget just like around maybe lower levels in house of the dragon we don't need huge dragons in xena there's some creatures but <laughs> mostly those were in hercules so realistically if you have to make xena today it's going to be very very cheap just filmed in new zealand like usually and there's going to be some 
you know, camps here and there, some villages, uh, some fortresses, and that's really it. I mean, it shouldn't be very hard to do, but both shows should work very well in any case of today. It, especially if they're true to the source material of what they have and expand it in a good way. Um, like, this is, again, one more thing to add to the list of why modern entertainment sucks is that when you continue something that has already been done and you have, want to tell a new story, Apparently, even if you hire everyone who has done work on the original show, you can still mess up. And this is the story that happened with the TV show Dexter. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Uh, I'm familiar the, with the concept of it and kind of like... Yeah, the, the uh, serial the killer that, the, that kills serial killers. That kills criminals, yeah. So Dexter was quite honestly one of the most amazing thing this, things that I've ever watched uh in my time and uh, a few years ago i think two years ago a new season came out with the same actors same people who have worked with uh, the previous show same creator nobody took over and i just want to say that the new season is not dexter it's everything but dexter it's like a perverted version of that Damn it, but what makes it so bad compared to before? Like, what's what's missing? What did they screw up? They, com they completely disregarded everything that happened before. They made the main character into basically an idiot, uh, even though he's extremely, extremely intelligent. Like, in order to go on for 20 or so years to just... Uh, being able to do what you do without being caught by the police and just the whole the whole original series is him being investigated or someone following him and trying to figure out if he is bad or not and he always manages to get away in such a clever way uh and uh, not raise suspicion and just keep the keep himself out of jail out of prosecution and just do what he does out of the needs that he has and in the new season, he gets basically, I'm just going to spoil a little bit, he gets caught by a local sheriff <laughs> from anything. What? Like, you don't have any evidence, like you don't have any concrete evidence, nothing to point the, the, the sheriff to him, nothing to concretely tie him. Because like, like this is, it, it was written uh, as, and it was written and filmed as a uh, crime flick. Like something, let's say from C like imagine CSI Miami, but but a little bit more darker, you know, like investigative work to the max, like police work, like evidence, blood work, uh, fingerprints, everything that could point out. And you have to be very meticulous and very detailed not to leave any fingerprints if you're doing the crime, to be very clean, to uh, not uh, have anyone being able to trace you. That's the whole concept, like, how, how good will he do against the police and against someone who is chasing him. The new season, uh, like, from nothing, from absolutely nothing, suddenly uh, she knows, like, the sheriff knows that he's the perpetrator and catching him and other stuff happens and the, the whole thing is so perverted. And like a lot of people waited for that because uh, Dexter is a very large cult classic. Like this is a huge following, huge. Like this is a unique concept that was never done before. Like, or at least never gained such popularity before this uh, TV series came out. And to have it disgraced in such a way, just because you want to change things around, it's... Uh, I don't know, horrible. Uh, that's the word I can use. Yeah, it's a, it's sacrilege. Yeah, basically, basically it's sacrilege. Is that, yeah, exactly. And that's why like I'm very uh, very against remakes, uh sequels and stuff like that, especially when like more than 2 or 3 years have passed because you're starting to lose the concept even if you're the original creator and other things are going to influence you or you're going to be heavily influenced by a certain company <laughs> if you know what i mean and you'll be forced to change some stuff so uh, i don't uh, really know where things will go from now as we mentioned in the beginning it is good that 
from uh, certain companies, especially Microsoft, just they're starting to turn around and things are finally starting to turn around for modern entertainment because every, I think every company now sees that, first of all, the money is not coming in their way anymore. And second of all, that the people are not having it. Like the people are done with uh, just uh, sitting quietly and just ignoring the show that they're, they're they're done they're actively abandoning and boycotting uh, shows they're boycotting games there are countries that are going to investigate certain companies <laughs> for misrepresentation of their history so when you have that that much of a backlash against your product i think this is the real wake-up call that you should have that the the course that you're taking is not the right one yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh boy, I'm so glad that they didn't actually reboot Xena because they wanted to make Xena as Katniss Everdeen or some sort. And I'm like, who Katniss? She's lame. Lame as F. Especially when compared to Xena. Like, how do you take the most layered female character ever written with the longest, like, amazing story, I don't know what, epic, uh, and then you take Katniss who's like, I volunteer as tribute. Oh my god, that I, and then so crying stupid. ten minutes in the, the, the second movie. No, just get away, get away <laughs> from Zina. Go, I don't want to see your back. So yeah, thankfully that's got uh, that uh, that got totally screwed. They also want to make uh, Zina full lesbian or something, where she actually never was. And that was never confirmed. So when you go back to those times, because I was uh, in all of the communities on Facebook and YouTube and other forums uh, years ago, and um, the SJW woke stuff started from there, actually. A lot of them started even from Zina because they want to ship Gabriel and Zina together. And that actually was never a thing in, in the show. They obviously had a few kisses if you watched the show, but that was uh, under contest, uh, context. Uh, uh, it had meaning. It was for some reason. It, it wasn't because they kissed, well, we are lesbians. You know, both Zina and Gabriel had a lot of men. I mean, Zina had a lot of men. Gabriel had one husband that was killed the first night, basically. <laughs> Sweet. She had him, so that was very unfortunate. Yeah, so the whole thing uh, became a thing because uh, one of the writers was a lesbian. And then there's certain funny stuff throughout the series, like they're bathing together, but uh, they have like a funny banter between themselves. Then all of a sudden, Zina is like, oh, are you sitting on the soup, on the soap? And, Z and uh, Gabriel is like, ah, oh, I wonder what that was. And such things like, uh, <laughs> like you will think that's lesbian, but it's not. It's just, you know, between two friends, like normal stuff. But that became the subtext of the show, and that got stretched uh, like like this, like Mr. Fantastic, uh, for years and years and years to become this uh, lesbian relationship within themselves. And then there was an episode which they kind of addressed that, but it was, um, you know, uh, interrupted at the last second when they were supposed to say if they were a couple or not. Such things just like fan service, but it was never actually canon. So, yeah. yeah but... If that was to happen with the Katniss thing, they will be legit lesbians. And that would have been like the starter wave of the latest folk stuff that we see today. Because that was like seven years ago, basically. Yeah. Like the the whole uh, that you mentioned, the whole banter and the whole um, like s suggestion is one of the tropes that they're missing in uh, modern again in modern entertainment because having a suggestion leaves the door open for everyone to pursue their own fantasies like i remember uh like uh which was it oh yeah again supernatural do you realize like can you fathom how many um homoerotic fan fiction is there about supernatural like oh yeah uh, that, that's the same thing with Zina and Gabriel there's a lot of uh you know well comic like pictures with, with yeah, them kissing and yeah. stuff this yeah. this drives this drives uh the public like this drives traffic to the show because people will read that and especially if it's a good one I like well written they're like I want to see that and brother, it leaves 
no, I'm not touching that. No, I'm not touching the, the brother stuff. I'm touching the human angel stuff. There's an angel oh, okay, there okay. who's very nice. Uh, like, but uh, uh, the, the main thing is that even if you're not a fan of such a show and you see, read whatever fan fiction and if it's written good and enough elements from the show are there it will drive additional traffic like you say okay i, I want to see that i want to see what's going on and for those people who are watching and they have certain things that they want that they're hoping that it will turn out in the way they do turn out uh like leaving the door open for suggestions is just an, a good trick to have uh people hanging on to the very end uh and when you even if it doesn't pan out, they will have watched the show and they're like, oh, okay, but uh, like at least the hope remained, you know. There will be people disappointed. There are always people disappointed. You cannot please anyone, everyone. Like there, it's it's impossible to please everyone with something. There is going to be even one person who is going to bitch about it. But well, still, you know, you... Um, if we, we, yeah, you say that these things and drive traffic but there's a lot of other ways to drive traffic like for example just have a very good compelling story just really really solid yeah, yeah, uh, characters yeah. and when you take warhammer for example like i said there is um nothing sexual in warhammer i mean if you see something like that this is very distant in some forgotten novel or some uh, novel somewhere or just a novel that does not matter that much or in a context that is you know, apart from everything else, but the core, like 90, 90, I don't know how many percent of Warhammer is like zero sexual stuff whatsoever. It's all about the war and, and the, the cool characters. And, and that is it. And that is what the drive is there uh, through that aspect of the universe. So, yeah. Yes, exactly. Like by driving traffic, I meant just to uh, get people to get to see the show. And then if they get hooked, then they'll stay for the end of it. Uh, the main thing, of course, it's always has been, and that's what another thing that we're missing. Like, I think we should have made a list, a big long list of things that are wrong with modern entertainment. Uh, but the, the one of the main things that uh, is currently wrong is that you don't, you simply don't have good stories anymore. Like, it's very like you still have good shows, good movies, and good games, but they're and good music. That's, I want to add that as well. You have still have good, but it's it's becoming more and more scarce to find it. Uh, if you go back to, I don't know, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, there were an abundance of good movies and good games coming out each year. That like uh, probably four or five alias games, triple A. Uh, you have uh, at least three, four blockbusters uh, per season. Uh, to watch on in on the cinema instead of uh, currently one or two per year uh, and it's becoming much more scarce to find any anything that is actually actually good not just uh viewable or watchable or playable but actually engaging that that's why i play old games by the way i i prefer old games because i have a ton of old games that i have on my computer and i've emulated them i've uh, rigged them so i can play them on my current computer and i play and i stream them uh, because older games kind of took the time to be good they took the time to 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 make them good because uh the the, the whole industry was still like in its early more early days and s s many concepts were more um not not as advanced and were new and they were taking the time to make sure that whatever they produced would be good for the most people and now they're not they just want to provide the message they want to they want to send out the, their message their viewpoints and I don't want to hear that. I don't know if any sensible person just wants to hear preaching on their favorite show. Nope. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I gotta go. Uh, yeah. But, um, I, think but we, you know, I, I think we covered everything that we needed to cover. Yeah, basically, guys, you also can see, for example, you know, how the boys just ruined the last season completely. So, <laughs> I'm afraid know, to watch it. There's so many things in there that, you know, before were subtle and before they made a very good satire of a lot of things politically, but now it's just very one-sided and it's very mm -hmm. focused on that. 
and it's not subtle anymore, just in your face. And the story and the storytelling and the characters just are left behind in terms of quality and depth and dimension. Everything's like shock value, shock value. Uh, this is political message. Uh, you have to accept it, swallow it, swallow it. And ha ha ha, how much it's uh, so, so funny to see uh, violence in a particular way. And there's just no consideration about really any boundaries whatsoever. So yeah, there's a lot of controversy in the boys. But I mean that when the showrunner for some reason, I mean, I know that you love this guy, but uh, based on his interviews, he got into very deep ego, ego driven. I mean, yeah, he got very ego driven and this is what happens. Basically. He had like having the star cast from one of the more popular shows that you have made is only going to get you to a certain point. Yeah, I mean, once uh, I mean, it's like, you know, I often give this example on my own channel, but uh, if I were to write any story whatsoever, but uh, I really, really like coffee, you know, <laughs> but the story is about the universe where there is no coffee, but I'm going to write the coffee in there, okay, because I love coffee. I mean, what the hell? Just leave your personal stuff. Uh, leave your coffee at home. <laughs> yeah, leave your coffee. Get your coffee in real life. Just write what this is supposed to be written about like the universe like focus on that don't don't get your personal uh what uh, whatever preferences in it because this is not about any any of this like how about uh if if i want to make a movie about one suck uh one particular suck and this suck it's just a black suck or a white suck and then uh what somebody else is going to criticize me because i don't have other colors of suck Exactly, <laughs> exactly, because everyone's in so triggered. In the freaking uh, show, a uh, movie, whatever. I mean, it's my show. I can write about freaking sex walking around. Can I? You can, you can. Uh, and if you want to entertain people, then you most certainly shouldn't accept criticism. But if you write the sock and your view of the world and the sock is representation of the misogyny <laughs> of people, then <laughs> you're going to fall into that category of people who are bringing the message, you know. But yeah, when you actually mentioned misogyny, one last thing, you know, I want to... I want to mention uh, the example that you gave uh, with Sarah Connor, how people were complaining that uh, she is uh, the victim of misogyny, where she is one of the most famous, most awesome female characters ever, representing true cunning, like you said, and the strength of of a well, a woman that is put in a particular very, very unusual and hard, difficult situation. I mean, that is a misogyny in itself that you want to suggest that this woman is somehow. Uh, you know, discriminated towards, like, what are you talking about? This woman is free to express herself, so to speak, as her in this particular situation. She's doing what she can. If this was really about misogyny, then she would have been put down by men this whole time throughout the, throughout the whole movie, which actually we do see today in some shows and movies. Just to say that there's misogyny and all of those things, we have to actually see it forcefully on the screen and mean... I mean, we do know that such men still exist today, but that is just not the way to do it. It's like with racism. When you try to say that everyone are racist, you're perpetuating, perpetuating the exact same thing that you want to be against, you know, racism. You're, made, you're exactly. making more of it. So, you know, um, I never felt as also as, uh, as a girl before when I was growing up that, uh, you know, characters like Sarah Connor or Ripley or Zena was somehow pressured by the misogyny. That is it's so damn no sensible it's, it's the opposite. They no paved the way defended. for true female heroism and how female characters should be written and what is making a female heroine a true heroine, a true hero. And then there's George Lucas who also say said about Princess Leia. I mean, who do you think that is the is the main character of the story? I mean, it's Princess Leia to a big extent because she is doing whatever she can in this situation, and she is using her wits and all of that. And that is how you see uh, her strength as a character, not as not necessarily kicking men's butts physically, but just doing other things that are extremely. Uh, real as well and effective so yeah not not to mention that she basically started the whole trilogy like if she hadn't set those droids nothing not, not none of the movies would have happened 
Yeah, but uh, none of these people that want to push uh, sexism and so on uh, actually accept the real things that those female heroines did. So they're the real sexist and misogynist and whatever. Yeah, but that's the way it is. Like, if you, t- if you tell them that, they'll just uh, scream about it and uh, start banging their head in the wall. So, because logic Feel is... like uh, a little girl. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, logic is absent to them. But that's, that's the way it is. That's by the way. <laughs> great, great stuff there. Great stuff in Johnny Bravo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we we pretty much did a very nice thing here. Thank you for uh, joining me on the stream. We I, I think we had a very very nice conversation. I'm very glad to have had it with you. Um, I would like to have you again uh on the stream because there are a lot of themes that we should we can cover together especially and i would be interested in learning more about warhammer as well and for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about earlier today i had i was a guest at her channel stream uh, and i highly suggest that you go and watch it because we i was educated on the warhammer uh, 40k universe which was very intriguing and uh i think you find that very interesting as well Thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah, this conversation is going to be a video, so I'm, I'm yet to uh, create it. But uh, guys, if you see this, no matter where you see it, if it's two days or three days times from this stream right here, the video should be up and ready. So hopefully you can enjoy that as well. And thank you so much for having me, my friend. Thank you so much for being here and thank you to anyone who watched our upload. This is a video as well, so you can uh, watch it at your own convenience. And until now, cheers and stay fresh. Bye.